Now let's move our attention over to the SEC. You can see right here behind me the South Carolina Gamecocks and Shane Beamer. Guys, uh, Shane Beamer is a lightning rod in many aspects, okay, because lots of people love the antics of Gamecocks fans. Some of them really enjoy the energy he brings. There's lots of talk about culture and family and things along the, those lines. And then there's other times where th when things don't go South Carolina's way, there seems to be some almost tantrums thrown in press conferences and, and some, some different things like that. There's been some ups and downs in terms of guys, you know, leaving. You had Jaheim uh, Bell and Mar Marshawn Lloyd that, that left the program after, uh, you know, before this past season. They were decimated by injury along the offensive front and really didn't give Spencer Rattler, who I think – was one of the more, and we saw it play out at the Senior Bowl, one of the more improved and, and talented and gutsy quarterbacks in all of the college football really over the last season and a half. And when it came down to it, his efforts were kind of kind of wasted almost because they, they, they didn't have but really one target to throw to at receiver, and they couldn't protect him as well. So... Dave, we're we're looking here at a twenty and eighteen record going into uh, the fourth season here for Shane Beamer, the exact same record that Will Muschamp had going into his fourth season. So for all the talk that it's better, it's better. It, it seems different. The results are the same. What are your thoughts on the pressure that is on Shane Beamer going into this fourth season? I think unless they're just horrendous this year he's gonna get to 25 from people i've talked to over there said that ray tanner's told him they and again people have made empty promises before but i think they would give him 25 unless it's like a three or four win season and it's just some debacle out there but you're right i suppose i mean jake crane was on my show last week and he was at the senior bowl we were talking about it spencer rattler was probably the mvp of the league last year imagine how bad south carolina would have been without him it was almost like he was a uh pitcher on like hypothetically, I see the Braves logo, the Braves pitcher, almost like a Max Freed goes out there and he loses games two to one because his offense didn't give it him any support. It's kind of yeah. what you felt like with Spencer Rattler running for his life out there, a little undersized in his first year he had some issues. But again, I think this year they like Lenore Sellers, they're going to roll with him. Um, again, when's the last time South Carolina had a good offensive line? I think we didn't talk. Yeah. They've been so bad. They've been bad either – just personnel wise, or they just if had a bunch of injuries and their depth's been taking a shot is taking shots before. It's been such a long time. It's funny we're talking about Spencer Rattler. I feel like Will Muschamp could never hit on a big quarterback. They had some other talent around there, but yeah, I think this year he's gonna be fine. I think with the over under, what Vegas come out with was it five and a half for South Carolina? Five and a half. Yeah, I'd probably go under right now if I had to predict, but uh I I, I just think there's gotta be some improvement. I think Len how good Lenore Sellers looks is key. If they see yeah. a young kid they have that they feel like is their future, uh, you kind of like where they're going. But if it comes out there, it's with um, – uh, oh, my God, I forget his name. If I say, but if he just goes out there and doesn't look great, I think in their changing quarterbacks all the time, eh, Bobby a lot of moaning and groaning going on in Columbia, especially heading into 25. That was a move that surprised me a little bit with as, as – as in as they in are on Lenore Sellers, like everybody's saying this, there's no question it's going to be Lenore Sellers. For Robbie Ashford to leave a situation in Auburn that he was having to really just kind of take whatever playing time Hugh Freeze was allowed to give him and then kind of go to what I think is going to be the same situation for him, Brendan, in, at South Carolina with Lenore Sellers being QB1. I mean, it, do you think this just has more to do with, hey, where they're planning on using – Lenore Sellers' legs, and they had to have a viable option in case he gets banged up. I mean, what what are your thoughts on on that move? Uh, because that was that was a little bit of a head scratcher for me. Yeah, I mean, getting Robbie Ashford for depth is not a, a bad pickup. I mean, they also got uh, Davis Bevel from Oklahoma, so they have options who have played college football before. Especially Ashford has more experience than Bevel. Uh, but yeah, I don't hate the pickup from a standpoint of we need to establish depth behind our starting quarterback. I do think Shane Beamer, I think he's going to go as far as Lenora Sellers takes him because that's his prized possession right now. That's his prized recruit. I think Shane Beamer is going to have to kind of ride the coattails of Sellers, see how far he takes him. I think his his kind of job security really depends on Sellers' potential, what he shows this year, as Dave kind of alluded to. 
Yeah, I yeah, think Al and, Loggins is going to have to be making his money this year. Don't y'all think he's going to be earning it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much? Ma- how much of that that was being called last year was just Spencer Rattler doing great at improv and being able to take over things? You know, because uh, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he he made some things happen uh, and escaped some trouble. You know, when he could escape trouble because they were banged up. Now. You know, people want to talk about the offensive line. I do think the offensive line will be better. You couldn't be worse, okay, because they were they were absolutely uh, just pummeled in terms of the injuries. But my question is, is, you know, yes, a lot of guys played at different times, but it was so many different lineups. Dave, you know as well as I do, it's not just, okay, these guys have experience. A lot of the offensive line, you have to have that experience together because you have to be able to – understand how this guy is going to pass this off to you and also if we have to adjust this protection are we communicating this well back and forth up and down the line who's setting the protections do they trust lenora sellers to to go out there as a first time starter in the sec with all he's going to have added to him probably in the run game as well and be able to adjust protections or is the center going to have to do it i mean there's so many questions when it comes up front and and health being the chief one among them which they seem to at least have that going in their favor going into spring ball right now no i mean as well like you said the offensive line can only be improved and think about it Who's going to step up on the outside for him? I mean, you had Juice Wells was hurt all year. Now he's not on campus either. He's in. He's at Ole Miss. You had Xavier Leggett's going. Now it's like, can a raw athletic prospect who who has all the abilities, high one of the higher ceilings in the country, and Nick Harbor? He's a track kid though, but it can't. At heart, he's a heart. At heart, he's a track and field kid. But can he transition and learn the nuances of that wide wide receiver position, um, and take that next step to be Lenore Sellers? Is, number one guy because they're going to need somebody to step up. Brendan, I do think that they get a valuable piece out of the portal in um, in Jared Brown, the receiver from Coastal Carolina. We've talked about these group of five guys, especially guys out of the Sun Belt. Okay, he was productive, Brendan, and I think that he can be a guy that, that Lenore Sellers will – will be able to to target. Of course, Luke Doty's still there playing receiver for him as well, but going to be a p- more possession type guy. But Nick Harbour's going to take take the top off. I don't think he's. I think he's got to learn to be a more complete receiver. I think Doty can be that guy that kind of, like I said, is a possession guy. I think Jared Brown is really that X factor for this offense when it comes through the the passing game. Yeah, and I will give Shane Beamer a lot of credit for what he did in the transfer portal this offseason. He recognized kind of the issues at wideout. Uh, with all the talent he was losing, whether it be Juice Wells, whether it be Leggett, and he went out and got guys like like you mentioned, the coastal kid, uh, Mari Huggins, Bruce is from Louisville. He was a solid player uh, this past season, so he got a number of guys at the skill positions, running back as well. Got a new running backs yeah. coach, so replaced him. There's some a little bit of staff turnover, but I do think uh, it's for the better in terms of transfer portal pickups, the staff turnover. So I'm going to give Shane Beamer a ton of credit for kind of recognizing those issues, those issues and uh, making a change. No doubt, and and you mentioned Rocket Sanders. Listen, that that is Lenore Sellers' best friend, okay? Because if he can be the Rocket Sanders Dave from 2022 and not from 2023 at Arkansas, where he can be healthy, in my estimation, you know, it was right there one A one B with Quinshaw Judkins that year for being the best running back in the SEC. And you add a, a, a offensive line that does have more experience, that that does have some more depth to it, and should be able to, to lean on people a little bit at certain times, particularly with the threat of the, the running back pull. That's something that that's something that Rocket Sanders benefited from at Arkansas was that people had to worry about KJ Jefferson running the ball too. Well, the North Sellers is like a carbon copy almost of of kj jefferson in terms of size and athleticism all that kind of stuff david do you think that that rocket sanders and then also a couple of other running back additions that they made can can get this running game going because they had virtually no ability to run the football the last two seasons for south carolina yeah, I mean, we talk about the offensive line. That's where it starts. But running back room depth specifically, you're talking about, Wayne. But remember, they had the kid what was the Newberry College, the Mario Anderson kid last year. They didn't – and I'm one of those guys, I kind of think you can win with a lot of running backs. But bringing in a yeah. guy that is proven in the SEC he can be productive in Rocket Sanders it can only help. Because, again, who they lost? They brought in Mario Anderson last year, and they lost um, – uh, Marshawn Lloyd over to USC. Yeah, so they're awesome guys. Again, not a good running back room last year. They had to play to carry and joiner. They had to move him back there and running back. So it was one of the 
Yeah, Juju McDowell, who's not an every down guy. He was a 5'8", 185, kind of scat back, third down guy. You, you feel better about the, the the room this year for sure, right, that running back room. A guy like Rocket Sanders, a proven veteran in this league that has proven production, can obviously can obviously only help you. Yeah, yeah Oscar no, Attaway had a good couple seasons at North Texas, so he's not yeah, a bad option yeah, as a backup as well. I don't know. That's sorry, the other that under there. Yeah, that's the guy that I was. I South Carolina, you'll tell me wrong. They're one of those teams in the SEC, too. And it's hard to predict this. And I talk about it with Buddy. You can't predict injuries. But again, we always talk about it. It's not your top 22, it's your top 40. Depth in general. Like it's tough to just predict them overall. I mean, I kind of like them on defense a little bit, too. They're starting to love. I mean, I like both safeties and more than uh, and I like DQ Smith. But if either of those guys get hurt, they don't have any depth on the back. I, it, yeah. Same with their front, like Tonka Hemingway and Alex Huntley, too. But if those guys get hurt, there's not a lot of depth. I, 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 I like I, this is a big year for Beamer, but I will say the thing I think he's failed at a little bit that hadn't helped him, and we're getting I'm getting off topic. I'm sorry, Blaine. Is I don't like the assistant coaches hires he's had. I don't think yeah. there are a lot of closers. I think that's why he kind of got rid of Mar, Mario uh, Montario Hardesty. I think he got tired of that's why that running back room guy should never got that bad. But I think well, then Justin Justin Stepp, who's been with him since day one, just leaves it. I don't think people realize how big of a loss that is in terms of the the, the culture that you're saying in South Carolina. Justin Stepp was a big part of that. He did a great job of helping to to mold that that team in terms of the morale and all that kind of stuff. A really really talented young guy that goes to Illinois to be the the receivers coach over there. You mentioned depth on the defense. Brendan, they added Kyle Kennard on the edge, and I think from Georgia Tech, he's a guy that at 6'5", 240, I mean, he's the prototype edge body, and I think he can be productive for South Carolina in, in an area where, they, where they, they need some production out there on the edge. Yeah, you said they need more production at, at, along the defensive line kind of as a whole. Um, Kennard had six sacks, I think it was last year, 11 tackles for loss. So he was a very productive guy at Georgia Tech, and, I mean, you know, the game is one loss up front, right? I mean, again, he's going out, going to be going up. You look at the schedule, a bunch of really good offensive lines, whether it be Bama, Oklahoma, a and has got some talent. Clemson's got some talent. LSU's got some talent. So, I mean, South Carolina, the depth is obviously a concern. Addressing it a little bit in the portal, Beamer has this, this off season, So it'll really be tested this year with that schedule. It is tough. Yeah, and, and it starts with Old Dominion. Listen, do not do not just think Old Dominion is going to come in there and lay down, okay? Like I said, that Sun Belt teams are tough, and they, they, they're going to come in and play tough. They beat Virginia Tech, what was it, last year, the year before? I mean, yeah. uh, you know, not, not, a, not a bad team. Then you got to go on the road to Kentucky. Always tough to go up to Lexington and play. Uh, LSU, we know what that is. Akron, that should be an easy win. So let's say at worst, let's – for their case, you got to hope you're two and two going through there, and then my goodness, that gone. Maybe I'm wrong here. What do y'all think? I think they probably need to be three and one. Actually, I mean, if yeah. you're really trying to feel decent about your season in those first four, like, woo. Yeah, because look at the next three, Dave. I mean, that's a murderer's row right there with Ole Miss, all the talent they brought in, Alabama at Bryant Denny, and then at back to back at Bryant Denny, and then at Norman, Oklahoma, uh, to take on the Sooners. Those are going to be two just terrific environments that you have to go into that are going to be just jumping over there. And you know you know that that's going to just take a toll on you after playing a, uh, an Ole Miss team, even at home, an Ole Miss team that is already going to be one of the best in the country. No, actually, I mean, I, I'm asking – uh, you and Brennan here. We talked to we talked about we talked about Texas Tech. We talked about Miami schedule. I saw a bunch of very winnable games on both those schedules. It's kind of the opposite to me here. I mean, you know, going through the schedule, how many would y'all say? All right, all right, it's a win. I'm with Blaine here. I wouldn't say Old Dominion right off the bat. They should win. I mean, they got almost have to win that game. I wouldn't say it's a guarantee. I mean, Akron. Uh, I mean, at Andy, maybe I put Andy that as a and Wofford. Game. I see four that they really should win. That they yeah, need to win. Yeah. That's four. I mean, every they'll probably be underdogs in every other game. Yeah, it's going to be that. That I think that's why the pressure comes in. I'm not saying that people are expecting Shane Beamer's team to win eight or nine games this year, but I'm saying I think when you're at South Carolina and you have, you know, not met the 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 hype that was kind of there was a lot of South Carolina hype going into 2023. A lot of people had expectations as 
particularly with how they ended 2022 mm -hmm. with the blowout win over Tennessee and, and with the win over Clemson. There was a lot of energy that was built up, a lot of equity that Shane Beamer had or had kind of built up. And then, you know, much like Texas Tech, they kind of fall flat in 2023. Now you've got – you're really searching for wins on that schedule. And I think the expectations are high because they think, okay, well, we're recruiting at a decent level. We're bringing in transfers at a decent level. The administration is, you know, they're they're investing in football. They're providing facility, all this kind of stuff. You better go out and win. And it's going to be hard to do with that kind of schedule. Um, so I think there is pressure on South Carolina.